inside the webinar and uh, we are going to begin this is not the first time we are doing it so well, most of you know us but in case if you don't know who we are batch is a small market research company specializing in facilities management and we have been doing that for well over six seven years now so primarily people come to us for market and sales development insights trusted friends chief execs sales marketing directors sales directors looking to have an independent view of the market or boost the pipeline or to have a specific insight presentations investor round tables buyer webinars you name it market engagements etc we just do it um so most of you know us so just in case you can find the information in that you uh, so pretty much the top 30 companies all friends work with them at different levels so those are the brands i'm not going to go deeper into that but our, our main intention is there is a lot of noise in the market there's a lot of uh what we call uh, subjective or some vague information available in the market what we are trying to bring in is the growth clarity and that's what we are proud about that's what people will come to us for and that's what we would like to share to you today part of this conversation so there's a lot more webinars that we have done in the past so one of the popular webinars uh, is early this year we we talked about why the fm market is screwed so please do watch that webinar because what that means is and when and the definition of fm has been evolving for over the years and because of the definition Today, there is a differential of close to five billion pounds in the market, which means there are tenders that, that, that put forward as FM, which is not really FM. There are tenders that is FM that's not put forward in FM, it's being bucketed as IT. So when more and more FM tries to behave as we are an energy company, when more and more we try to behave as a tech company, when more and more we try to behave as a workplace optimization company, etc., we try to take anything and everything inside the more we screw ourselves up. Um, so that was a gist behind and we had some data points behind it and we shared that in there. I think please do watch that. That can form the basis of everything that we rolled over. Today, it's all about cleaning, cleaning services, but we'll be building it up gradually. First, let's have an overall look at what the market is because we do refresh the market every month, market data every month. So very unique where you find most of the information that's done two years out of date, done on 2021 data, presented as a report. You might be used to those downloading that dense, outdated reports, whereas we come in and we try to share the information every month. So every month, so what you found in the last webinar, which we talked about growth opportunities in the next three years, if you haven't, uh, I think the recording might still be available on demand. Have a look. Uh, the data points has moved already. And every time when the data points move, when we, when we talk about a topic, we come and we refresh where the market information or as an overview then we go into the specific topic so you're going to find that information and then we go into specifically how cleaning is procured by different sectors and what's the different thing and what the cleaners how cleaners impact and then one or two pointers from our side having worked with few buyers in the contract benchmarking and also a few suppliers on enabling them to renew the contracts and stuff we'll just touch those things so principally this is the problem um you know which we try to solve but still you know we are getting there we are getting there so there is a lot of noise in the market the fm market is this the fm market is that and people fall on the trap downloading reports austin sullivan mintel you name it any other companies listed here what is actually the market says of fm every company have their own economic models of defining what the fm market is and uh, they just predict the fm market is going to grow two percent ten percent eighteen percent you name it and these are all the trends and challenges but we want to as somebody who who was a sales and baby person somebody who operated a contract from my previous role previous roles within the industry, when I took up strategy roles, when I, mean, I did acquisition for, for larger companies, became a trusted advisor by investors and the board, for me, I just want to build up based on the data. So what we do is we monitor a lot of FM contracts and that started way back in 2018. Um, so, um, you know, 2018 onwards, you know, what are the, you, you might be having subscribing yourself with what we call the daily tender trackers in public sector which tells you this this opportunity is coming today and they might give you a little bit more information on some other you know stuff that you could get there but but what we don't want to focus is on daily what's happening what we want to focus on who's running what contract when does it expire so simply we just want to go bottom-up analysis so that we could say hey 
what could be the FM market size if I add up all the contracts or as many contracts that's available in the market. And that's how, how we build our market size, which means if we say, um, say it's X billion pounds, and we can go back to X billion pounds is made up of this 10,000 plus contracts. This is the annual value of these contracts collectively, they add it up, obviously. Um, wherever possible, we just uh, estimate the number. Uh, otherwise, we have a community called Rain Insiders, and the Rain Insiders help us to fill the gaps. Uh, you know, so collectively, we manage this database. And today, you're going to find insights from this database. So we converted this um, information into an app called Rain App. So the Rain App kind of you can slice and dice the information. It's, it's actually the contracts database. So today, we monitor close to 11,000 contracts. 11,000 contracts, many obviously public sector publishes private sector it happens on closed door because we did ask uh, to the attendees um, one week two week in advance hey what questions do you have one of the questions was hey most of the private sector happens closed doors how can we get in front of them um yeah we are getting there we are, we are trying to find as many contracts available and we are just posting it in there because every buyer wants to have new breed of suppliers and every supplier wants to work with the new buyers and here we go but there is no space for them to collaborate and that's where we came in now so this is the snapshot that we monitor public sector contracts obviously if you go back and check your OG tracker daily trend provider hey go put the keywords and say okay now i want to know what are the contracts that's coming out for tender in the next three years or i want to know what contracts were outsourced in the past one year you might be thinking your public sector tracker gives you the answer. Tough, it doesn't, it won't, because it's very easy to give you daily trackers. And when you go back into research insights, that's very hard. So we, we do subscribe to a lot of those things and we try it and then we come on. So that's the underlying principle. So it's, it's covered by sectors, public and private. Within public and private, it's segmented further by 11 sectors. So in the coming months, we will be picking up sector service, sector service, and we'll be going down. The next webinar will be on commercial buildings or pretty much commercial buildings, office, commercial banking, finance, professional services, what's happening there. Today is cleaning. So that's the point. So and then it's categorized further into hard and soft and integrated FM. So you could clearly know which sector procures IFM, which sector procures hard, soft, within that sector, how they behave, you know, is he procured. So we can actually get to the bottom of the information. That's what we are going to share. So cleaning could be part of IFM, cleaning could also be part of soft FM, and cleaning could also be part of specialist FM. So you need to know which buyer procures specialist service, which buyer procures part of it as soft FM, which buyer procures it as GFM. The pattern is very different. For the very first time, we are moving in from dollars to, sorry, from pounds to dollars because uh, the marketing uh, colleagues, the marketing industry colleagues who, who buy a lot of reports and record a lot of reports tend to say, hey, Basta, uh, all the marketing people, marketing market research companies provide FM market in dollars. Do you mind making it in dollars? So again, we are not big fans of uh, UK market presenting in dollars, but here we go. This is it. So what we are saying here is, you know, when we add up all the contracts that we monitor, we are looking at close to $43 billion of spend. So many of those uh, market reports uh, tells you that there is an X number, which, which, we, which we found. Um, say, for example, in this case, Modder, for example, say 66 billion, and uh, Frost and Sullivan says 43 billion. But if you go to the bottom, hey, how do you know this? They will say the economic model, but there won't be layer two, layer three, layer four. But what we now can do is we can just segment it exactly in the same way they have segmented it, and we can now go back and distill down one layer at a time. So 12.4 billion of public infrastructure, this is nothing but your government. So how many contracts in there and how does it build up? Next one, commercial, next one, institutional, which is your schools, colleges, higher education, um, and your healthcare and housing. This is how they have segmented, now we can match them. Next one is the others, uh, which could be your leisure transport and other industries. So again, we are matching mainly because just to cut down the noise in the market uh, so that we can get closer in. So you, what the insights that we are going to be sharing now is gonna go from here. Slides, next six slides is going to burn your head. Um, <laughs> just be mindful because it's, it's a lot of data and I know it's three o'clock. Let's just go. So well, based on the bottom of contracts, you know, I know you're looking at your market, whatever the market that you're facing on. You know, If people ask you, hey, what's the annual value of the market size? Yes, it's $43 billion. Fine. How is the $43 billion? If I 
if I then manage okay, $43 billion, but it's procured differently, which means the average duration of a contract is different. And in, in, we can't segment it public and private. At the same time, we can't segment it. This is how um, banks procure, this is how. But either way, we can, we have the information. What's the average duration of a contract by sector, by service, and by region? <laughs> And um, but but we could we could dwell deeper on that into 20, 30 slides, but I have three, four slides for you. So at the moment, if I have the total contract value, which is like all the annual value multiplied by a duration, exact duration of the contract, this is what we get. UK market is worth 177 billion USD. Obviously, we don't monitor all the contracts, but with the contracts that we are monitoring, this is where we stand. At 177 billion in GBP terms, it's close to 146 billion. Um, but as we add more and more contracts, we can get the spend is becoming even more larger. So that's where we are going on. So we are getting closer on the private sector or we are getting step, but public sector, obviously, you know, we are pretty much, we can say 95% of all the contracts we have. Uh, private sector, I think we have 80% of the contract. That's about 750,000 pounds a year because that's the minimum threshold that we work. Any contract below cleaning, that's, that's like, you know, one cleaner in one building or five cleaners in one building, et cetera. Obviously, nobody needs to go and share that information, but, you know, that sort of 100,000 pounds, 500,000 pounds contract, not necessarily we have everything, but anything above 750K, yes, 80% of the contract, we do have it. So based on that information, this is what we have. Public sector, private sector. Private sector at the moment is low, but more and more we add uh, more and more of our rain insiders help us to fill the gaps more and more we try to go regional contracts etc this becomes very very strong and uh, as we started from 2018 to now we are improving 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 so this is your underlying principles as i mentioned there are some data caps not always you know the contract duration and interestingly the largest number of gaps that we found out was in the public sector do you believe me yeah, and that's it which means there is no there is not much clarity on exactly how, how, what are the contracts? How long is the contract in public sector? Even though it should be published, it should be explicitly available. So it's um, like we fill the gaps and that's where we are. So overall number, let's just start from there. It's 43 billion USD, 177 uh, in total contract value split by public and private. Public, we are looking at 22 billion. Um, private, you are looking at 20 billion. That's how the whole thing came out with. Now let's go one step further. How does the overall market get split up by sectors? We, we saw that public and private, but let's now have a look by hard, soft, and integrated. This is very interesting because cleaning gets bucketed as specialist services, which is still under softer firm. That's what we are bucketed. Or it could be done in softer firm, or it could be done in integrated FM, which means if somebody tells you, IFM is the procure, I, IFM is, is amazing. IFM is the one model that people are happy with. That's the version you are, BS. Um, no, it's, that's not the case. As it was the model, mainly because the real estate companies and the property managers, managing agents or integrators, as they call themselves now, use that because it's easy for them to manage multitude of suppliers. But that's not the case anymore. And that's the thing, because simple arrangement is no, just to, it, it, uh, we have the data points to say, I, I'll, I'll tell you at the right time. But just to, just to remember, the market is evenly split, which means every sector procures it differently, which means if you are a TFM provider in a private sector, don't assume that's the only way forward, um, because many, many private sectors are twisting to or switching to um, specialist providers, but you need to know who those providers are and why they are moving that way. Secondly, the public sector, you might be thinking that they procure cleaning, catering separately or security separately, they might be also moving pub bundles. So who are these people? And that's why contract by contract, when we look, you can see a pattern in local government, what do they do? Healthcare, what do they do? Um, social care, social care homes, what did they do during COVID, et cetera, and that's it. So, uh, so primarily as we, as we move into the next two years, uh, what, we are for, what we are gonna find here is there will be some point TFM will happen and just to keep the TFM service, M&A will happen, consolidation will happen. But on the other side, the switch towards single specialist suppliers will also happen. So if you're a consumable company, cleaning company, supplying on both sides, it's still okay. If you're a specialist providers, you need to know where to go specialist and where you need to be part of the supply chain. So at the moment, look at it as a single split. So soft FM, 14.1 billion. 
cleaning is part of it. Integrated FM 12.2 billion cleaning is still part of it. And how, what proportion? That's what we are going to cover in the upcoming slides. So now, if we go back and have a look at the same 43 billion USD, how is it being split by, by different sectors? Now you need to know which sectors am I actually playing? The uh, question is, okay, I'm going to enter new sectors. I'm going to play with the existing sectors. If so, uh, do I have enough in the existing sectors? Am I having enough opportunities to play with an existing sector? If so, that's how, how, how we can help. But for here, commercial, obviously, commercial and, uh, and government are the big sectors. In private sector, commercial, 30%. In, um, in government, it's 29%, followed by institutional. This is where schools, education, NHS, and others comes in, then industrial, and it goes others. We have broken it down by 11 sectors. And that's how, if you have attended our previous webinars, that's how whole we have broken down. We won't just call commercial. We will just say office. We will say finance and banking. Then we say professional services. How much of it is managed by managing agents, retail, transport, leisure, schools, universities, colleges. We have a massive category in here. But here, we are trying to standardize it to connect it to what's available in the market so that we can align ourselves towards it. And it's easy for the chief exec or the marketing director, sales director to say, hey, this is what I found, how you can map it. That's it. So that's the point is, again, look carefully. What markets do you play and what markets will you be playing in the in, in the in the years? And just to align yourself, hey, is it better for me to continue to play in my market? If so, what's the white space? Which means what are the opportunities that I could bid within my sectors that I'm not currently bidding? And now I'm entering new market. What are the opportunities? I'm going to bid in new markets. And if so, what value the tenders are coming and how are they procured? And and those sort of stress testing is what many companies use us for. Now you frame the strategy, we go a stress test or you get the inf information from us and you stress test this with the new existing clientele. By the way, this is how the market, 43 billion split by sector, split by services. Now, uh, which sector procured soft effect? Now, if you, if, you are, if, you are, if you want to get into the next level of information and understand, okay, another 14 billion that you're procured, how are the different people, you know, who are the different people, which sectors actually procure soft FM on its own, not as IFM, on its own. Right? If, if somebody tells you, hey, IFM, totally commercial, here we go, we debunked it already, $4.2 billion worth of soft services is procured only as soft services. These are bundled services within the commercial sector. This is not TFM. So don't blindly assume that um, commercial, yes, commercial does procure TFM, commercial, yes, TFM for the past 10 years was very popular, but that trend is coming down. 39% was pre-COVID. Today, it stands at 33%, which means 6% down just during the COVID. TFM is no more. Specialist services, which was 31%, now increase up to 34%. So it's increasing. So and that trend will continue. So look here, for which, which, who are, you know, if you are playing in this market, which is commercial, public infrastructure, and if you're, and if you always work on the soft FM side, where you don't work on hard FM, you still have a market to play. So, and obviously, uh, the reason for the players is because in attendance, we have a lot of, you know, strategic suppliers, lots of tier one suppliers. There are many SMEs who also work as subcontractors to these bigger players. So understand uh, which sector and how you can position yourself. So if you have any Q&A, as in when I go through, just add it um, in the Q&A box so that I will pick it up at the very end and I will answer the question. So that's the one. Next, uh, what we go. Um, next one is uh, which sector procured more of the FM? Central government is totally pro TFM, totally pro TFM and uh, they I know the CCS framework that just went live, as you know, still went on procured soft FM, hard FM, TFM as, uh, as its own lots. Uh, but central government, because of the big chunks there, they still prefer TFM, not local government, not NHS. Um, that's what you're finding institutional at 10%, you know, because that's where they are in. So if, if you go and say TFM in a, in a, in a local government or an NHS, mm, you're, you're doing it. You might be missing. There might be one or two buyers who might be doing that, but that's not how they procure. So public and commercial, yes, still TFM happens, which is more mainly on the central government. Just position it accordingly. Why is it important? Because the buyers doesn't know what other buyers are procuring. That's where 
okay, you know, the reason you're sharing this, not just to buyers, but also to suppliers and to SMEs is when you are, when you're going in positioning your service, your company to your buyers, don't just talk about why you should procure us, talk about how the market procures itself. Because when you educate your buyers to tell them, hey, we are a software firm player, and uh, this is why you should procure. By the way, these are the 50 plus local councils that has procured that way. Uh, you will be, do, don't underestimate that the knowledge, everybody knows everything. And that's something that we found it was shocking. We had 812 procurement people um, recently in a webinar, uh, and we were shocked to know they know the tender is up for renewal. They go and look at the questions, what was done before. So FM tend to be procured in the same way as it was procuring, only proactively, as I mentioned, incrementally, uh, the buyers are changing. The buyers are changing, as you know, it's 3% down, uh, 6 or 6% 6 down for TFM, 3% up on uh, soft services and specialists. But that's because very, but otherwise, they're still going to procure in the same way. So if you are somebody who's trying to shape your service to the particular market, particular buyer, you also need to come with statistics or facts and information how the way you have positioned yourself is not only going to enable you within that tender, but also help them with this is how the whole industry or the whole market is, is procured. Obviously, you're going to find a lot of uh, comparative information that says local councils also procure TFM, local councils also procure specialists, they not only do soft FM. So you can pick up what are the contracts that procured specifically on the way you want it, and you could add with that. Same thing on the commercial which food and beverage companies have procured it that way, which retail in the past two years have gone inwards and procured specialists rather than TFM. When you do that, that's how you grow. So now let's get into the cleaning services. Obviously, the definition of market uh, is, could be very varied, and we are moving into the world of COVID, where mobile cleaning, technology-based cleaning, et cetera, but in very simple term, cleaning is there. Um, so how... Um, Based on, based on our data points, uh, if you want to take a picture, take a picture. This will evolve immediately tomorrow, <laughs> but for now, this is where we stand. The number of cleaning contracts that we monitor is close to 2,000. Out of the 2,000, yes, obviously, many are in public sector, but there's a lot more in private sector as well. As we, as we add more and more, that's where we stand. The standalone cleaning contracts, which is 926, which means these are the pure play cleaning only contracts that's procured within that percentage, which is uh, close to 50% of the cleaning contracts that we monitor across all the sectors, it's still pure play, which means if you are just a cleaning provider, you don't do anything else, you have up to 50%, but you need to know which contract procured that way. Secondly, if you're a soft FM where we do cleaning, some elements of catering, but definitely security and other things, again, 962 kinds of comes closer to that. And, you know, obviously the integrated FM is also there, but as you can see, the volume of contracts is a lot more for pure play cleaning and the soft FM contracts. And we are positioning it as IFM. Um, that's where, you know, many bigger companies just work accordingly on that one. It's for bigger companies because the value of those contracts are very high, uh, whereas the volume of the contracts is low. Whereas when, it look, when you're looking about standalone cleaning contracts or bundled services, you're going to find a lot more contracts, but there will be somewhere between, now, if, if you have the records, 500,000 pounds all the way up to one, one and a half million pounds. Whereas in the other ones, you might find contracts up to 10 million, 15 million, 30 million, just cleaning alone. So again, we can get into sectors, but I don't want to over, over, overcook your brain. So point here is if you are looking at cleaning services, uh, what's the average you know years that uh, they procure cleaning um again you know if you are looking if you are coming with continuous improvement innovation improvement your return of investment because one of my friend asked hey there is dynamic cleaning you are going to invest on technology and stuff yes please do but your return of investment at an average is uh, you need to get your money back in four years you know i mean like uh, yes, there are contracts for 10 years, uh, but it's only like five plus three plus two, seven plus three, and that sort of contracts is, is, now, is now not really readily available. It could be five plus some extension, 
but mostly what we are seeing here is, is four plus one plus one. Um, in private sector, three plus two or two plus one plus one. Um, one plus one, you know, I'm so because because industry evolves so quickly, benchmarking is very, very common, and you just need to be prepared for that. Now, average total contract value again, you know, the, because we, we monitor a lot more bigger contracts, you, you're having a slightly more variation. Again, when you're looking at the annual contract value, as I mentioned, 750k onwards is what we manage, so that's where you find a lot of volume. And on this side, private sector. So, if you are working on a specific type of clients. Uh, you need to know which clients procure that type of volume of clients so that it's much easy for you to get on with it. So that's a high level high level point is obviously this is based on data. So if, if you are somebody who waits for the tender to come and then click and uh, submit the tender with your best solution, um, this might not be the right model for you, but predominantly the way we are structured is to support strategic clients who focus on what's coming up in the next three years, how am I going to position my service, uh, my product um, to the right market? And that's the information that we are trying to share it with you. So this is the high level principle. Um, and I leave that to you. Do you know, um, maybe answer in the Q&A, do you know the top five soft services suppliers? I'm not going to say who they are. How much market they own? And I leave it to you. Um, just answer in Q&A. Let's see if anybody is close. A top five soft FM, soft FM or cleaning providers, you name it. They could, you know, the big companies, they also provide soft. What do you think the $43 billion, how much of the 43 billion or specifically here, the total contract value for cleaning alone is $15 billion. How much do you think of the $15 billion pie, the top five has? Leave that to think about, um, add it in Q&A, I'll have a look at the very end and see who is who has closed on that and you, you are going to find some surprises there next let's get into the cleaning market uh, sectoral analysis which means as you mentioned okay fine now uh, the public sector if you if you look into the annual contract value we are looking somewhere close to 3.8 billion 3.8 billion so how has it been done again you know people might say uh, Basco, that's too low. You know, it's. Um, I, I read somewhere it's 54 billion. It could be 54 billion. It could be one cleaner uh, cleaning a rental apartment. It could be a, a cleaning who a clinic company who specializes with some uh, estate agents in there. Those are not structured. Those are not structured. We are looking at a formal tender driven environment. Um, so anything about a certain threshold, which in this case 500k or more. So primarily. If you're looking into that, as you mentioned, the volume of the contracts is a lot more in, on, on, in the private sector. If you look at office again, leisure is very high. Manufacturing, pharma, industry will come next. And then others, which is anything that doesn't fit in with what we have mentioned there. Again, the reason for this is there is a market for everybody. At the same time, do you play in the market is something that you want to, what you want to question yourself? If so, how much? share do you have in the market and who are the key players within the market what contracts do they run um, that's something that you need to know so that you know which of those five competitors that you have and what are the contracts that's going to come for renewal that they are running that you can handle if you're looking at an m a it's the same okay i'm going to enter the retail market on the cleaning side which means i want to know who are the companies that exist in the retail sector that I can win so that these are the contracts that I could accumulate part of the tender. You know, there are so many ways that you can look into this data sets and that's so many ways, but primarily this is where we are. So that's the market today. So what are the upcoming opportunities in the next uh, three years? So again, uh, from, from the records that we have, obviously the private sector, mainly soft FM and the TFM related is gonna come in as you can see, 33 plus tenders with the collective biggest spend of 570 million. Then you have a lot more volume with, uh, with a softer spend of 209. But it's, it's here listed, and then you can take a picture. Um, you know, if you are working on schools, obviously there's a lot of, because it's if the churn comes repeatedly on, uh, on this sort of projects, because it's not big. If, if you are a local uh, cleaning provider working in a local borough, then obviously you know the schools um, and the colleges, that's always the churn is going to be. So education, local government, volume-based lot of opportunities. Um, central government, mainly with TFM, and you'll be interesting to know many of those contracts will be coming out from the CCS framework. 
in the software from one with the cleaning dps we also have the cleaning uh, dps it's, it's coming up for renewal uh, in the next year or two uh, the tender procurement will start next year so that's pure play cleaning for central government um, so if you are a cleaning pure play you have to be on that regardless whether you are part of the ccs framework that you just recently got in rm6232 but that one is totally renewal of what existing then then the market goes in you know uh, from the education then you have universities and then you go housing da, 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 da. so all these things are there um hope you do that so again um uh, the question again on the private sector again uh, just uh, you know in private sector <clears throat> the not always the end buyer procures the service it's been procured by real estate or what we call the managing agents and you might know the big managing agents some of you are attending this webinar some of you will be watching the recording do you know the top five real estate companies how many buildings they manage just in london alone guess add the answer there because I know one of the questions, because we always ask to our attendees, is there anything that we want to cover here? The question was, uh, we don't know because this is um, restricted procurement. So we don't know how this is going to come for. Is it Deloitte who's running it? Is it PwC or is it the real estate companies who are running it? But it's okay. If you know which buildings you want to target, then we can tell you who's actually running the procurement for those buildings. Um, so primarily, here's this flip on the same analysis top five commercial real estate companies, you know who they are. How many buildings do you think roughly they manage just in London alone? Answer it and let's see. Um, we normally have what we call a scribble quest for our learning company, this is rain quest. Just go for that, let's, let, let's because you'll be surprised. You'll be really, really surprised with some of the data pointers um, that we have and also that, that you can use it to your go-to-market very easily. So. Just answer this question, top five real estate companies, how many buildings do they manage in London? It's not 100, it's above 100. I just give you that tip and let's see, try, try please. That's it, and let's, uh, and that's the high level point. So next, let's go on. If you look at the same thing uh, within, uh, within the market, instead of the opportunities there, uh, which is the numbers we have given it is in graphical format here, just for you to understand. Obviously different formats, just, uh, click and uh, save it or screenshot it if you can, because we will not be releasing this detailed data set. Uh, but high level principle, yes, if you're on the cleaning market, obviously you want to be in the commercial estates. Uh, leisure, which is, you know, as you know, leisure in our case means it's the, it's the museums, it's the footballs, it's the any sports related stuff and, uh, and all, this, all the things comes into manufacturing pharma, back now, big, that's, the, that's where the market is. And then housing, social care, and then schools, colleges, this is this, it just comes in there. So again, when you look at the value of the contracts compared to the volume of the contracts, which we saw last time, um, that's how the comparison goes in head to head. So you need to know, um, are, am I going to focus on big ticket deals? So I could go from hit my numbers, or if so, which sector do I need to focus? Which contract do I need to focus? If so, who is actually running that procurement, who's the incumbent, who's running it. That's one way of looking, obviously you'll be happy to help. Or the other one is, okay, we are already in this sector. And uh, you know what? Yes, we have a sweet spot is half a million to 1 million. Let us know what are the contracts that's available in the domain. Let's churn as many contracts possible and then we'll win it. Again, you know which markets that you can play as well. <laughs> this is the data set, okay? It's been 35 minutes of nonstop data, hope that helps. Um, take the data and if there is any specific questions drop it more than happy to answer now when when you look at the uh, when you look again um, why why these slides exist because then we asked the industry friends who are attending some of you are here um, what other pointers that you want to cover us in the slides this is one thing came up with okay we know we know that is a there is rm6232 which is the new ccs tender What's the other frameworks that's available in the market? These are some of the other, other frameworks available in the market. And then definitely RM6130, which is the one that expires in 2024, which means renewal start early next year. So if you have done the CCS framework, don't just wait for it because the reason for this particular framework is to tap into uh, even the small chain, uh, small, sorry, low value opportunity. So you should be definitely considering this. What are the other frameworks that you might need to pop into to have a look into this? 
these are some of the other other frameworks as well so some are expiring um some will be some will be there already and some are done by we are there is there is 3200 plus frameworks facilities management frameworks in the contracts in the uk alone so if you go and list it not everything will be useful to you we have listed some high level pointers here just have a look at what frameworks that could be of interest to you and then you can just frame whether really uh, anything anything got procured out of it again you know, if, if we can reach out to us we can tell you okay this is the framework who are the who are the buyers within the framework who are the suppliers within the framework and what contracts actually came out of the frameworks more than happy to dig deep and tell you so um so far what we have covered is okay how, how is the market first of all you know we, we are we are going very wide on that so why have a market stood then uh, we just touched in like you know there is there's a lot of noise in the market about what's the market size we are getting into the bottom and then based on the contract data we looked at the overall market size we also looked at how soft FM, who, which sector procured soft FM, which sector procured integrated FM, and how cleaning is structured, and the cleaning related information, upcoming contracts, and so on. So, so now, uh, you now when you stress test this with the standard tender questions, okay, can you go and answer, please, the building cleaning specifications? Can you go and answer how you mobilize the contract, how you do assurances for the capacity capability for the contract, which switch on COVID, switch off COVID? ramp up the service ramp down the service how do you provide reporting how do you do this etc this is how the market used to be standard questions and every provider have their own standard response or some unique responses then the layer got increased as you saw the sustainability program how do you do sustainable procurement in terms of consumables in terms of doing uh, the way you work tap it up with carbon reduction plan then how are you going to do with social value even the bigger companies a private companies have their own social development goals so your question is and obviously we do work with a lot of buyers so especially in the in, in the government buyers it's fine it's taken for granted living wage you know what living wage is fine some buyers are happy to provide uh, the, the the additional cost that requires you to go upgrade it and voluntarily many 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 suppliers have already positioned them as living wage suppliers which means that's how they do that's the right thing to do but obviously this is a low margin stuff so how are you going to differentiate yourself but looking at the at the customer's perspective you know yeah you know what we, we are trying to avoid the race to the bottom um, just so that a cleaner um, is, is looked after properly so living wage first if you haven't get into that's where the market moves and that's where it could be a standard practice both public and private because more and more sustainable ethical procurement kicks in that's where we are heading to second is in addition to that you also need to think about you know the sustainability um, in the way things are done and also not only owning how you are going to plan your own carbon but the other one again this is where if this is just a cleaning contract you're asking me to deliver cleaning services why do i need to focus on the other elements and that's going to give my cost again it's totally your own imperative but what we are finding here is more and more uh, companies are willing to invest provided that connects to their own ethos their own values etc so let's just go back and see you know the living wage providers who they are what they do again they know lots of kudos if you are one but the next one is sustainability will continue to increase um, if it's waste if it's this and I'll keep an eye on that which will add additional burden to you but the main point which I want to cover is the human part of it, because we now know the data and the shocking, we did a shocking survey, I won't say shock, we did a survey with, uh, with 30 buyers when we had the 912 buyers within, and we asked a very simple question. I will ask you the same question. Do you think, who do you think the buyer values more, the cleaner or the company the cleaner works for? If you think it's the company the cleaner works for, I don't know, answer company. Now, obviously, I, I should have made it as a poll, uh, but I'm just, I'm just telling you this. Or if you think the buyer actually value the cleaner more, then answer is cleaner. Just to answer in the q and I just want to know because there are, uh, there are a few of you here who have joined the, the webinar. Just, just in, from, from your own perspective, what do you think is more valuable? The cleaner's personal brand, him or her, or it's a company the cleaner represents. I'll just give you 30 seconds. Please, please do answer. I think it's uh, 
because there's nothing wrong. Because if you believe it's the company, it's the company. If you believe now, you know what? I love the cleaner. It's, it's a cleaner. But again, I just want to get a sense of uh, that, what, what your current thinking is. Then I'll share what feedback that we received. It's very, very interesting. Again, um, I, from, from the response that we got, it's different. 91%, 91% of the 812 buyers said it's the cleaner, not your brand. So I know that we have the brand surveys. You spend a lot of money on your branding for your company. Try to use the personal branding of your cleaner in your marketing um, because it's him or her who will make or break, regardless of how great your technology is, how great your um, you know, sustainability is, end of the day, when the tire hits the road, it's the cleaner. Uh, your company's brand is important. Obviously, people make decisions. And what that means is, you know, it's still people have their own perception of, of a brand, of a company's brand. That you can't change. But what you can obviously influence is through your cleaner. And that comes with a sticky point. And I thought it could be 50-50 or it's at least 80-20 but 91%. Because why? I The second first question was why? Oh, because that cleaner stayed within that buyer, not just because of whether it's you, the supplier, they always stayed within that buyer. The only thing that changed every three years or 3.2 years or four years is the patch of the uniform that they're wearing. But that cleaner always was with that cleaner. This was fascinating because the attrition rate, which is which we know in the industry, is some. I, I, I found a number which I don't know um, the actual truth. It's it says two hundred percent. So again, and I'm I'm just asking you the question: What is the attrition rate within your company within the cleaners? Is it two hundred percent? Because when I last spoke to a chief exec of a, of, a, of an FM company, he mentioned nine percent. Um, so again, you know, what is the attrition rate for your company? If that's the case. You know, yay, the attrition rate, if you reduce the attrition rate, A, not only saves your cost, because you need to do the DBS checks training, bring them to a lot of uh, you know, nuances of how you operate, but it also means that the personal branding of the person is there, and then it also influences. So again, uh, you know, maybe if, if you have uh, the next 30 seconds, please do answer, while I get into my next point, is what is the attrition rate within your company for cleaners again this is a safe environment and um, chat only stays with me again chat is not even working so just in case you know just have a look if, if so if the attrition rate is that because you were tender even though i have standard tender questions that you're responding what the customer haven't told you yet is they value how you treat your cleaner the value the cleaner the value everything about him or her a lot more than what the stuff you are having, because one of my friends asked me about dynamic cleaning, and that's the answer. That's the answer. Your technology, your sustainability should be around your cleaner. And if that flips, okay, uh, you know, this, this came up. This, the two pointers that I came out actually came from cabinet office, cabinet office buyers. And the other one is actually came from NHS Trust Chief Exec, right? And my question to you, exactly the same thing. You know what? Taking a first one is, is remembrance messages. Do you know that the industry hasn't actually shared the number of cleaners or the number of FM people who actually died from COVID? The government want to make a plank. The government want to make it as a memorable memorial or at least a plank to honor those people who died. You know, the industry hasn't given the answer. And, and now, you know how many LinkedIn posts you see it's with selfies? Look, my cleaner, she's great, him is great. And it's because of him and you get 30 likes. You know who is watching that? You know what comment we receive from um, the cabinet office, uh, one of the commercial directors who specializes in cleaning. It'll be interesting to see how many of the same guys take the same cleaner to an awards dinner. And here is the question to you. Do you think the IWFM awards is coming, obviously, companies, companies, companies. 
but I'm, I'm talking about human. I'm talking about human. This is what they value. This is why insourcing is very high in NHS and local councils, and it will continue to increase. Because in the previous slide, we, rec we recommended 15 contracts to be insourced in the last 18 months alone. Because we cannot differentiate anything, the technology or anything, because it's the cleaner is the cleaner. The cleaner is happy to stay within that. And him or her doesn't, he was, him or her connected much more towards the buyer than to the supplier. But you, as an industry leader, I haven't checked the attendee list yet. Number one, you know what? When you take the selfies out next time, think the perception of your buyer is actually the opposite. It's totally opposite. The, this, the empathy of uh, the cleaner is, uh, is amazing, has gone because the industry hasn't done enough. Remembering them already. The second one is, uh, you know, the turnover is very high, which means the way you are going to look after, yes, you know, these are the hidden uh, motivations behind the buyers, which is not return on tender documents. And again, you know, I, I've been told it's 200%, but we are averaging it out to 120. Well, what is your attrition rate? If so, bring your continuous improvement and technology in all these weeks with around the cleaners and focus it around the use cleaners use the journey because yes it's great but you know what's the concern behind the buyers this i don't know whether you are concerned about it i'm being very open here maybe it's a profitability of the contract that's how we think revenue retention winning the contract but the, your buyer's concern is the inflation is high it's going to be hard in the next three years. At the very minimum, they're expecting you to be a living wage provider to give them that. What else can you do to help the cleaner? Because I don't know whether you know, but most of your buyers know that your cleaner is working in two jobs. Right? This is, you know, this is very, very, you know, one chief exec in a bank promoted his cleaner to be the contract manager managing his own supplier. Right, because you will be surprised. I, I, I'm just lecturing you, but be all You will be surprised at touch points that your cleaners have within your buyers, and you know what? They are your advocates, and uh, bringing them inside your continuous improvement into your technology, into your solution. So, what is it? That's what it's going to be. So, your boss is the customer or a cleaner. You know, the well compensated, well trained, well satisfied workforce is what's going to be there, and anything around. Is an added bonus sustainability yeah great you know technology yes great um you know and um, what do you call it? all these things comes in but please be very mindful please be very mindful these are not written but this is how you will be evaluated this is how you are actually softly evaluated and if your tender documents doesn't share that that's it again i've already covered this because you know as the more and more as you're seeing here you know we, we have been now the technology the fm fm cannot be technology we already covered that part of why fm is screwed more and more fm companies are working trying very hard to be technology companies acquiring tech you will never ever be considered as a tech supplier because you already found out you know in, in the fm market screwed the, sub, the supply sustainability or ESG index doesn't include a single FM supplier as a tech partner, doesn't include. So there is no point pretending FM technology to be your buyer, have their own tech vendors and they already have them to solve their tech things. And they have already entered the ESG domain as their tech partners. If we go into them, we either have to connect ourselves to these tech vendors or what they expect you is to look after the human part of their thing, and that's what we are happy to do. But what we have seen more and more in industry is you are seeing we are trying to talk the language of the tech or the sustainability and the other things to becoming buzzwords where we have used and thrown. This is the same word that was used by an NHS head of property. Cleaners are used and thrown. Last year, they were the heroes. But your industry didn't even manage to make them key workers. And when they had the chance, right? It was horrible for me. But again, you know what? I'm, I, I don't use any industry. I'm not part of any industry association. I don't, I don't believe in those things. But you know what? You are judged at a human level as an FM provider, not as a tech and sustainability. But contracts are contracts because that's not a procurement. In your tenders going forward, how can you bring your technology sustainability around your cleaner? How can you position that? will be the trend that you need to go for. Again, 
I, I found this very interesting thing. I'm going to share. How many of you are aware of this APPG, the All Parliament, All Party Parliament Group? Supposedly, this exists. Supposedly, this this is alive. And the February 2001, 70 MPs are there, part of the cleaning and hygiene. Go and read, read their importance. Do you think these guys honestly are going to look after your cleaners? And read, you have, you have written, you know, we train 40% of the proposal people globally in the world. We do lots of market insight sessions for the buyers, for account directors, for chief execs. Read, this is what we are positioning on. The priorities, I mean, like, I'll just leave it to you to judge, <laughs> not me. And then the another body, another association, which also represents, talks about, hey, you know what? The sector is worth 54 billion, really? <laughs> Okay, if it's 54 billion, you know, it's so sad. You are the industry, you call yourself association. It's so sad that you're still being called as a mop with a person with mop. That's what you're paid to do. What have you done so far to enable the industry to change that image? Because they act as events companies. I'm sorry, I've been brutally honest with you, because they act as events companies. And uh, all, the, all they want is awards, ceremonies, shows, conferences. That's it. That's how they make money. So underlying, they come out of the fluffy stuff. But the buyers, are looking for you to deliver the human element of FM, but we are moving more and more on the other element. But here we, we also rely on the pseudo bodies to help us to get the answers. So again, keep that in mind. Who's representing you? How are you positioning yourself is way more important. So few pointers before I open up for questions. My God, I've already talked too much. So educate your current buyers, your existing clients. You know, it's super important for you not to just talk about NPS surveys, um, how good are we at the scale of zero to nine? You just need to tap into the emotional, the emotional part, motivations part, what is it? Don't just uh, assume that they know what they're doing. It's important for you because you have done tons of um, buyer interviews, sharing them maybe in a one-to-one -one level or bringing all the buyers, existing buyers within a company's portfolio, telling them, hey, this is how the market is going. You'll be surprised how thankful they are for you to do that because they are lonely. They are expected to procure a service. They are expected to renew a contract based on very limited information. So sales and marketing directors, again, very switched on people know what they're doing, but others it's too much because that's what the webinars are for. It's free, but certain elements, it, it's paid. But you educate your current buyers, educate your sales and marketing team. Your marketing team, if they go, and this is where it got fudged, a marketing team recently for a big strategic supplier went and posted 30% of the market is still, uh, it's still in 30% uh, market has still not come to the market. So what's the right word? Uh, it's still, uh, it still haven't come to the market. And uh, these are the data, etc. It really backfired because your marketing team needs to know what the sales wants and the sales needs to know what the buyer wants. And that is a huge gap because educating your existing buyers existing sales teams, existing marketing teams, and your account directors who are currently running, if possible, the investors is super important. And that's where the trend goes in now. And once they understand the market, then the right amount of investment goes to the right acquisitions and the right mergers and, uh, and the right funding goes into the right technology and the right thing. At the moment, it's all up in the air. Sustainability, technology, let's invest, let's go, let's add, let's do accelerators, let's do this. But in reality, you know, and uh, to answer your point, yes, insourcing is continued into this was another question. Is insourcing is going to increase? Yes, insourcing will continue to increase on local managers because they don't find much differentiation within suppliers um, because they normally procure specialists. It's easy for them to batch it, especially in London. If you're a London provider, be mindful of that. Next um, is uh, yeah, the specialist cleaning tenders will, will also, you know, the TFM model will also move into more and more into bundled and soft FM related stuff if, if it's slightly larger then it might go into specialist service most separately you know celebrate your cleanliness <laughs> that's the whole point of it so let me go back and look for any questions i'm sorry uh, the chat function wasn't working and uh, while i do that if you have any further questions please do uh, please do add the questions but um, let me look for any questions if, if, if you have any questions please do ask the questions and let me go from there any questions please I will, I, will, I will send a summary version of the slides, but not with all the data points, uh, with some few pointers, maybe in a PDF. 
Um, but that's it. And the recording will be available for the next three days until Monday after that we'll pull out the recording. Um, so um, if you want to share, if you want to watch again, listen in, that's it. But, 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 the, but the principle is the market is buoyant, market is going to grow, uh, but don't just be stuck with sustainability and technology all the time because the expectation from the buyers is very different to what you perceive. Because, and the whole thing is because some market research company projected trends and challenges within the market is the XYZ and these mark and this sales and marketing directors downloaded that reports and they started to believe that's how the market wants. They start to put, post those messages to the buyers and the buyers are sitting in mm, really. So spend some time, spend some time with the buyers, spend some time with the cleaners. That's how the way things goes. Um, and thank you for the colleagues who have uh, answered the question. Um, let me have a look. Um, thank you. Welcome. Um, uh, top five. Uh, okay. The top five uh, market share is 29%. It's 29%. It's much, much higher than what you anticipate because many of these companies are also have a lot of smaller companies. You don't just believe at the top line of who they are. You also have a lot of subsidiaries. And the subsidiaries are tied up and between that it's massive what they do so uh, uh, that's one um, next one is uh, <clears throat> uh, as i mentioned no the brand the brand value i know there is a there is a different thing brand value can swing but mostly uh, yes people the bigger companies have bigger companies need to position themselves as global small business and uh, that's that's another keyword global small business means that Okay, yes, we are. Yes, we are UK. We are national providers. We are, we are national, but we are local. Um, that's going to be the buzzword going forward. You know, it's not like having said that, this is the interesting point. The buyers, because they don't know the market really well, they always end up procuring the people, the big players. And the smaller players, because they don't know the market really well, they don't know how to get to the buyers. And that's where the interesting dynamic says, because even though if you go to the buyer and say, do you want the big players? They will say no. But who do we procure as your service providers? The big players. And that, that's the thing. But it's the same people who will just come and say, we don't value the brand, we value the cleaner. You know, it's, uh, and that's the thing. That's a trust deficit. What inside to what's outside is what you need to tap into. So if you can align your, your personal brand with your company's brand, that's where the gold dust is going forward. And, uh, and align your technology and sustainability around it. So question, how is the market open to small and medium sales companies than the top players? Again, we covered that part of the data points um, because as, as we looked at the data points, that is already, you know, especially in, uh, in the low value contracts, which we looked at, the, there are a lot of opportunities for specialist providers. You know, then there is the equal spend on soft, hard and TFM. And there is also, but you need to know which market procures because it's not, it's, it's a very generic question. How is the market open to small and medium sales companies? It purely depends on which market you are currently playing and then how that market procures your service. Then you decide whether there is a space for SMEs to play. So th that generic thing of inclusivity, um, educate your SMEs to be part of the supply chain. Again, that's going to come in. It's, it's very hard work. The bigger companies don't know what are the SMEs. You know, we, we have, um, again, if, if you look at the slide that I talked about, um, how many cleaning suppliers do we monitor? Um, the, the, we, we monitor close to 500 plus cleaning suppliers, <laughs> right? 500 plus things, and out of which maybe um, few might have attended this webinars, right? So uh, if those are if, if those are the providers obviously that 500 plus suppliers it's not vague we know exactly what contract that 500 plus suppliers run and uh, whether they run for themselves or whether they are part of bigger supply chain that's how things go again i think i crossed the limit here uh, one minute past is there any any further questions before we wrap up oh that's it so uh, thank you very much for joining a happy holidays and uh, if there is any further questions, please do drop us a line. More than happy to, uh, uh, to answer those questions. But otherwise, have a happy holidays. The next webinar will be on commercial buildings. If you're a Rain Insider, thanks for joining because recording for this and the slides and stuff will be uploaded for the Rain Insiders. But for others, a recording will be available for the next three days. And then, um, you know, I will send you a summary version of the slide. Perfect. So thank you very much for joining and uh, have a happy holidays and I'll be looking forward to seeing you September 
for the commercial buildings where we are. Thank you so much. Hope you find it useful and uh, stay healthy. Thank you. Take care.